we can go ahead and get started. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. We're gonna be discussing improvement options along 93rd Avenue. Um, my name is Jill Roselle and uh, I work for Alta. I'm the public engagement specialist for this project. Other members of the project management team joining tonight are Mike McCarthy, the City of Tualatin's Bond Program Director, and Kristen Ballou, the Civil Engineer at, with OTEC um, leading the project. So um, you can see we've got the agenda up here. We're gonna start with some greeting and introductions. And then um, Mike will briefly discuss the project background and tell you a little bit about the City of Tualatin's Bond Program. And Kristen's going to review the specific improvement options and talk about how they were determined to be the best options for 93rd Avenue. And after Kristen's explained the options, we're going to open it up for further discussion and just a real general casual question and answer session. So feel free to jump in at that point. Um, please note this presentation and discussion are being recorded. You should have been notified. Um, but we will be posting this on the project website just to ensure that everyone has an opportunity to be informed before voting for your preference. And a reminder to vote because your input really does matter. The city is gonna make a decision based on what we hear from you. Um, so let us know which improvement you prefer. And once you feel all your questions have been answered, you can make an informed decision and weigh in with your vote via the texting survey, which we will be posting again. And you can find all of this on the project website. So um, we did have a great response to the survey that we had out last December and January. And we're happy to have all of you here to discuss further the improvement options for this corridor. And without further ado, I'll pass it along to Mike McCarthy, and he can tell you a bit more about the 93rd Avenue Pedestrian Safety and Access Improvement Project. Hi, so I'm Mike McCarthy. I'm Tualatin's Transportation Engineer and also managing the Tualatin Moving Forward Program, which was passed by the voters back in May of 2018. And resulting from a lot of discussions among city leadership and hearing from citizens of, we'd really like to do more to help our city transportation wise. Uh, so we were just asking, okay, what projects would you like to see? And then we took a look and said, okay, what do we think that we'd be able to fund and what do we think would work? Um, and one of the issues we heard about quite a bit was helping students getting to and from Tualatin Elementary School. And so there's a project in the voter passed uh, bond program to do that. And so then as we got to that, we started taking a closer look at the whole area and started saying, or seeing really where people are walking from to get to the school. And so a lot of people walking along um, Sagard Street coming from this area to 95th and then up to where the school is. Um, so that's where we ended up looking here. And then I think you probably know about a lot of the previous surveys we've done and hearing pretty clearly desire for sidewalks along 93rd and uh, desire to uh, try to tame the traffic on 93rd. And um, and Kristen Ballou uh, with OTAC is our consulting design engineer on this project. And she can walk us through a little bit more of uh, what's planned there. Sure. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen, I hope. Um, and I should have somewhere on here. Okay, some alternatives. So as Mike mentioned, um, in the initial survey that we heard, or that um, happened, oh, was it six months or a year ago? Um, we heard pretty loud and clear that people wanted sidewalks along 93rd, and there's a, a disconnect at uh, the north end of 93rd with Sagar. There aren't existing sidewalks. And so that has become part of the project. We're working on the design for that now. Um, but in addition to that, um, one of the other comments that we heard were concerns about both speeding and cut through traffic on 93rd um, and what can be done to reduce that. Um, and so we looked at different alternatives for what could be done to help that scenario and came up with two alternatives that we think would help 
that situation. Um, the first one being speed humps. Um, this is a picture of where we would propose roughly to put speed humps. We would need to um, go out in the field and, you know, locate these more specifically based on driveway locations, uh, manholes that are out there. Uh, we want to avoid things like that. Um, but in general, we would be looking at installing approximately three speed humps along the corridor. Um, generally, speed humps are spaced between 300 and 500 feet apart. And with the length of that, this street, uh, we really need you know, at least two, preferably three speed humps um, to keep the traffic speeds down through the corridor. Um, and so that's what this option would look like. Um, this is you know, a picture of, of what a speed hump would look like. I'm sure most people are familiar with them or have driven on, on roads with speed humps in the past. Um, the ones we would probably install on 93rd would be um, the speed humps with the cut throughs for emergency vehicles. So it's not a solid hump all the way across. I don't know if you can see in this picture, but there's kind of a, a, a spot where the hump comes up, down, and then up again. And that just allows a path for fire trucks to be able to move more quickly um, down the street. So that would be one option. Um, the second option um, would be traffic circles. Um, traffic circles are a bit more expensive than the speed humps. Um, so I don't know if budget wise we would be able to install one at each of the intersections, but we think that by installing a traffic circle for, for one, it would kind of break up the corridor. 93rd is a long straight road. You can pretty much see from one end to the other. And so, you know, just looking down the road, it, it's easy to speed up. It's um, easy to look at it and, and see it as a, a shortcut um, per se. And so by adding the traffic circles, you kind of have a visual, um, something to block that straight away um, visually on the corridor. And it would also make cars have to um, travel around the traffic circles. Um, so there's three T intersections on um, 93rd that would be appropriate to install the traffic circles at. If this was, you know, a desired um, treatment, we would have to um, look at where we would install those traffic circles um, and then also look at budgets to see how many could be installed with this project. Um, with the traffic circles, it, it kind of works like a roundabout um, where you have to you know, go around the circle as you travel through. If you were to make a left turn off of the side street, you would have to go out and around the circle. Um, larger vehicles, delivery trucks, um, fire trucks wouldn't be able to make that left turn around the circle. They would do a cut through, um, an illegal left per se, uh, around there instead of going around the circle, they'd, they'd cut through here if needed. Um, so just by making cars do that movement around the circle would slow the traffic. And then having that visual um, physical thing in the middle of the street, I think it would also it break the street up and make it not look quite as straight through, um, easy cut through type of, type of scenario. Um, so that is our second option. The third option that we're presenting for uh, in the survey is just a no build option. With this option, we're still planning to do the sidewalks on the north end. It's just that we wouldn't do any of the traffic calming measures. Um, just for, for background information, we did do a traffic count and speed study along 93rd and found that there's about, well, on the day that we took the counts, uh, there were about 300 vehicles approximately that used the road. Um, and average speeds, median speeds were about 24 miles an hour. And uh, what we call the 85th percentile speed um, was about 29 miles per hour. So a little bit of speeding, not excessive um, on that particular day. Um, and so given that we wanted to present no build option, um, speed bumps and traffic circles, you know, some people who live in the neighborhood and drive it all the time and have to drive it all the time may not want those um, in the neighborhood. So um, we wanted to, to give this as an option as well. Mike, do you have anything to add? Well, I think that covers it for 93rd. 
I think uh, you mentioned the sidewalks. Uh, we are also planning a new crosswalk on Sagart on the north side of 93rd mm -hmm. that would uh, have flashing lights and be going in this fall. Yes, that the construction on that will actually start fairly soon. Um, and what we're planning there is is a, a crosswalk um, across Sagart on the side of 93rd and it'll have the RFP, which is the flashing pedestrian signal. You push the button and the lights flash um, to warn vehicles that, that a pedestrian is, is going to cross the road. And then um, the work would also include extending the School 20 from uh, 95th along Sagard Street to the east side of 93rd, mm -hmm. and then an all-way stop at uh, Sagard and 95th. And hopefully everyone received that. Um, notification. There was a postcard and an email that went out um, indicating all the improvements that are part of the 95th and Avery project. Um, and if you want further clarification, we can definitely give that um, or direct you to it on the website. But um, for this um, outreach, we're really just looking to get feedback on the three options, the speed humps, traffic circles, or the no build option. So, um, is there anything else to present or should we open it up to questions? Um, you know, I think, I think we should open it up for questions. I would like to mention one more thing though. If it, if it turns out that traffic circles are a preferred option, um, this is an example of a traffic circle in somewhere in the city of Seattle. Um, and as you see, there's a lot of plantings on the interior. And I think one of the things that we had discussed with the city was uh, to see if neighborhood associations or, or just the neighbors that are near the intersection would be willing to maintain the plantings um, in those traffic circles. And so that's something if you have wanted to weigh in on that, um, we'd appreciate any input that you have on, on that aspect. I think the big thing we wanted to hear is just what questions do you have? Yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and again, if you want to rename yourself so you're not all Jill Roselles, <laughs> go for it. Um, or you could turn your camera on and give a wave. I'm also prompting for an unmute if you're interested in asking a question. Um, there's also a chat option. And you can usually type in a question if you prefer not to actually speak. But now's the time to let us know any questions you might have. So would it be helpful if I didn't share my screen right now? Sure, no problem. This is this is Bob Hawes. Um, I just wondered if a tra the traffic circle, uh, the traffic on circle I'm familiar with is at 86th and Avery, and it has stop signs. Is this the kind of traffic circle you do? It would be. Uh, what, <laughs> go ahead, Kristen. It would be similar to that. I think um, we looked at that one as an example. We probably would not have, I believe that one has a very large tree in the middle. Uh, we wouldn't be able to plant large trees because of existing utilities that are in the street. Um, and I think it would be scaled down a little bit just based on the size of the intersection that, that we have at 93rd based on, you know, compared to what is on Avery and 86. I think that was a, a wider street um, and a bigger intersection. So it, it had a larger circle than what we would put here. But there'll be stop signs. Yes. So there um, would still be a stop sign from the side street, but not a stop yeah. sign from 93rd. And then the circle would be smaller than the one on Avery, but it wouldn't be an always stop. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I mean, yes, I had a question if there was any option for doing um, a combination of the two, such as two humps and a circle or two circles and a hump or something that would be a little bit um, of both. I think that'd be possible. Um, I think we're really looking to see if people have a particular preference or if that's something you'd like to see. I think, I think there's a way to write that in or include that there's um, not, but I'm happy to include it in the survey results just as a comment. Um, yeah. And I guess I was also going to share that we are not in an HOA in this area, but as a 
um, residents of a corner of a street that a circle would potentially go on. I feel that myself and neighbors would be fine with um, kind of maintaining um, foliage or <laughs> whatever we need to, to make sure that it was maintained. Um, but our street does not have an HOA specifically. Okay. And I think as we're imagining these, we're imagining the vegetation being maybe a little higher than what you saw in the Seattle picture. Um, but I think we can talk about what specifically goes there and particularly what maintenance level uh, you'd want. I think there are a lot of options that would be lower maintenance than the Seattle option. Yeah, yeah. the one in the picture is a lot of annuals that you'd have to replant every year. And, and I, I don't know that we would go that route. Um, we could if that's what the neighbors wanted to see, um, but there are other options that would be lower maintenance. Um, would the circles limit on street parking? Around the area. Like around those areas where the circles are being put in, would there be limits on on street parking? Or just as you're able to, I suppose? Uh, we would figure that where it's uh, what we call a T intersection, uh, where this, you know, only a street coming in from one side, that the opposite curb would also have to be no parking in the circle area. Uh, but the rest of the street, uh, they wouldn't prohibit parking or preclude parking in those areas. So there would perhaps be additional signage that would be added for no parking zones? If, um, like if it was geometrically necessary, that we would then have to add some signage for a no parking zone. Any other questions? Uh, one that I'll mention, uh, I believe, I think our earlier survey mentioned driver feedback signs, which say, you know, your speed is, and then they'd flash the number, you know, 21, 28, whatever your speed number is. And because of the speed data, where um, we had our average speeds in the 23, 24 range, and 85% of drivers at 29 or lower. Um, we didn't see those being very effective because they'd be showing numbers that were below or slightly above the speed limit. And we didn't see that causing most drivers to slow down. And then the people who are above the 85th percentile, it's kind of assumed that, you know, seeing the speed really wouldn't slow them down. So, uh, that's why we didn't recommend that one as an option. This is Marilee Cost, and I have a question about your speed survey. Was it done in the late afternoon hours, like between three and six in the afternoon, or what portion of the day did it occur? Um, I'll pull that up. So uh, we actually surveyed over a week, and for so we got pretty good data Sunday through Tuesday and then Thursday through Saturday. Um, so for 24 hours of six days, uh, is the data that we got. Because my, my observations have been a lot depends on what's going on on I-5, which then backs up Boone's Ferry. And that's when people really use the cutoff a lot. Yeah, and we did see higher numbers, well, higher numbers on Friday. Um, and otherwise fairly similar numbers for a number of vehicles. And so we did get a full, or almost a full week of data. My other observation is uh, especially going back to the comment, could there be some combination of options? I think three traffic circles in that small length of thing just seems terribly excessive. Very inconvenient for local residents and very inconvenient for emergency responders. Yeah, and that's one of the drawbacks we'd see to the traffic circles option and why we are just saying one to three. Um, it's possible to just do one, but it does make it 
does make the turning movement in and out of the street um, a lot longer for whoever lives on that particular side street. Are there any other questions? Any of the Joe Rosales or anyone else? <laughs> Uh, well, thank you um, for your questions and thanks for joining us. And if you think of any questions, um, I believe you have Mike's phone number from emails I've sent out, but you're always welcome to reach out directly. Um, you can also email me. Um, but yeah, be sure I will share once again. Actually, I'll just ask uh, any other questions about the project in general? I think if you were going to talk, you're muted. Oh, I, I, my, my name is not Jill. It's uh, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I would say, uh, just my vote would be for the speed humps. I think that I lived in Seattle for a while, and those traffic circles are effective. But I think you picked quite possibly the most beautiful one in the city. Most of them are just kind of overgrown messes. And uh, I, you know, I, I'm kind of would expect them to turn into the same thing and just kind of be eyesores. So uh, I guess I would put my vote in for the speed humps because my concerns are primarily for looking forward with the expansion of the Tualatin Heights apartment complex with which kind of seems all but inevitable. And so uh, if we have an opportunity to kind of slow the street down, even though data may not show that it's happening now, I certainly would anticipate it happening in the future. Um, and it really only takes, you know, it is the minority, as we know, who kind of are the loudest. So loud cars going fast up the street tend to, you know, point out issues. So my two cents. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Keith. Are there Great. other ways to vote besides submitting a text or is that the only way to do that? That is the way that the survey is set up. But like I said, if you wanted to include a comment, this is a great opportunity to do that. It will be included on the survey responses. So, or you can, you know, like I said, call and have a conversation with Mike or send an email with any additional concerns or thoughts that you might have. Joe, when does the survey end? Um, I believe we're gonna keep it up at least another week so everyone has a chance to watch this recording if they want and then um, through the weekend. So that is Sunday the 22nd. All right, and if you wanted to cast a vote in a different way, uh, you can always give me a call. Uh, my phone number is 503-691-3674. Uh, so you can call me with your vote or with any other comments that you'd want to get in. Uh, you can also email me at mccarthy, M-M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y, at tualatin.gov. And we can get those comments into the feedback as well. Definitely. And I'll share all of that information again in an email follow-up to this. So. Any other questions? Thank you all very much for your time. Yes, and if you think of anything, um, be sure to let us know. And like I said, I'll be sending out an email notification with um, the posting for this, if you'd like to watch it again or share it with anyone else. And again, email or call with any questions that you might have, okay?
All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.